you know, people are the most depressed now, they'll only get better. And you turned out to be right to your credit. So I want to go forward thinking, maybe in a longer term time span, are you in the Michael Saylor camp that Bitcoin will most likely hit a million dollars? Yeah, so how I back this out is two different ways. One, I just look at the log chart of Bitcoin. That trend, you can extrapolate it. And somewhere around 2030, it'll be a million dollars. That sounds as ridiculous today as it did when I first bought it at $200 and I put a price projection of $100,000. I said it's actually going to a million, but I'm going to discount myself for being an idiot by 90%. So it cost $200. It could go to zero at that time, certainly, because that was 2013. But my price projection's 100,000. And people said, this is ridiculous. And I said, it's the best macro trade of all time. So the million dollars doesn't seem that preposterous. The other way I back it out is when I look at the adoption of cryptocurrency. So you use as a proxy the number of active wallets. Now, we all know that's not a perfect proxy because people have multiple wallets. But you compare that to IP addresses for the internet. Start them at both 5 million. Now, people have multiple IP addresses as well. So it's very similar. It's just directionally gives you an idea. Crypto is growing at twice the speed of the internet in terms of adoption. So it's the fastest adoption of any technology in any asset class the world has ever seen. So if we just assume that growth slows, as it did with the internet, because once you get bigger and bigger numbers, it's hard to grow at such a rate. So it goes from, let's say, 175% a year where it's been trending and goes to 43% a year, which is what the internet did from year eight onwards. Well, crypto gets to a billion people by the end of next year, a billion active wallets, and it gets to 4 billion by 2030. Well, at 4 billion, the price will certainly be a million dollars. So it kind of backs out from the adoption of the technology and of the log chart, because the log chart basically is the adoption of the technology. The Bitcoin halving was one of the most critical events of this year in the crypto market, and it's set to cause a supply shock, which will drive the price of Bitcoin to $1 million per coin by 2030. But the bigger game is yet to be played out as alt season arrives and we full enter what macroeconomic expert Raul Paul calls the banana zone. The banana zone is when we see huge face melting rallies all over the crypto space creating huge wealth generating opportunities. In his most recent interview with Altcoin Daily, Raul shared his views on what's currently happening in crypto markets, how Fed rate cuts will affect the space, and his thoughts on the Bitcoin halving and his views on the altcoin season. He believes that the crypto market is experiencing a transition from a decent crypto spring which saw Bitcoin rise a significant 150% to a full-blown crypto summer. This transition is marked by hitting all-time highs and witnessing a surge in on-chain activity, indicating the onset of a more bullish phase. He also shared his thoughts on how the altcoin season will play out, specifically the price action of Ethereum and Solana. Raul also explored potential price ranges for Bitcoin in the current cycle, considering factors like market cycles, liquidity, and adoption rates. However, make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Raul reveals his 2024 end-of-year prediction for Bitcoin. Now, here's Raul Paul with his latest insights. You know, I've always been talking about this the last time I spoke to you and talked about this. There's a, a lovely transition that makes it easy for people to understand. It's like crypto is the best performing asset in the world for years, and then it's the worst for one year. That first year is known as crypto spring. Sometimes it can be a bit choppy. It could be like spring. Some days it rains, some days it's sunny, but every day it gets a bit warmer. We had a pretty decent crypto spring. I mean, Bitcoin was up 150%. Then we started and we're in the process of transitioning to crypto summer. And crypto summer is when you start hitting all-time highs and things start going bananas and we're very close to that now you know we've got to the all-time high in bitcoin and we've been messing around so whether by the time this video comes out or not it's broken out or it hasn't we don't know it doesn't really matter you know it's pretty standard to have a chop around for a bit and then fireworks happen and really the fireworks truly happen when altcoin season comes, and that comes in crypto summer and we're starting to see the first signs of that it's been meme coin season for a while now and i think it will drag you know the big memes like doge up and before you know it even everybody I, I find it amusing everybody is writing off ethereum right now and exactly the same happened in 2020 in 2020 ethereum was underperforming bitcoin in spring as it always does then it started basing and then by the end of the year it just never stopped out performing and i think we're in a similar kind of pattern and that's typical of altcoin i think it's been anticipated by the markets but it just at top level if you think of most people who've got credit card debts or mortgages or interest payments on cars it just makes everybody's life a little bit easier. And if you've got a little bit more discretionary spending, you might be able to put it into the market. And so at the margin, 
it'll help. I mean, obviously, it would help a lot if rates went down to 2%. Are they going to get there or not? Certainly not this year. Maybe next year. Depends what happens to inflation. Depends what happens on a number of different levels. But really, it's not interest rates that actually drive the world. It's liquidity. Liquidity is the money that the, the central banks put into the system, often in conjunction with the government, to try and generate economic growth or drive markets. And we bottomed in liquidity, I think, again, last time we spoke, back in November 2020. Uh, two, 2022. That was the bottom of the liquidity cycle happened to be the bottom of the crypto cycle and bottom of technology because those are the forward-looking asset classes and going forward my work suggests that liquidity should continue to ease all the way into 2025 so therefore if we've got rising liquidity against this backdrop it should be positive day of the bitcoin having what should they expect nothing it's a coin flip between it going up and it going down but what we do know is the supply of bitcoin from the miners will halve so over time there's less new supply and therefore the supply has to be met by existing existing participants selling. Now, considering about 60 to 80% of all Bitcoin holders don't sell, they just hold, there's actually quite limited supply around. So when you add in a kind of macro bull market, it tends to then tilt the supply demand imbalance wildly in favor of demand. Not enough supply, too much demand. Add the ETF bin and that adds more FOMO. It's easier for people to get in. And before you know it, you start building this banana zone cycle. So the halving itself is a non-event. It's really, it's the signal that you're about to come into crypto summer, which happens to coincide with the presidential election years every time and it also corresponds with what i call the everything code cycle which is the debt refinancing cycle which is the macro cycle they're all the same thing so you get this kind of powerful dynamic of politicians giving out free candy because they're going into an election stimulus you tend to have a liquidity cycle because of the business cycle because they have to refinance the debts of the governments and you tend to have the bitcoin halving which is a reduction in supply and that's why these periods get really quite exciting it's difficult to know what kind of cycle we're going to be dealing with. There's a school of thought that says this is a left translated cycle, which means it goes up fast early and then peaks early. Most would finish in 2025 in December. That's normally how these crypto cycles have finished. That that third year would be the a December, November kind of period. So could it come earlier and peter out this year? There's definitely a probability of that. What price would that be? I would say 200,000, something like that. And that would be, okay, that's gone very far, very fast. The most likely outcome is a standard bull market. Now, the last one we had, 2020, 2021, was actually a stunted cycle because really the final leg never happened. We had a huge final leg in 2017 and an even more enormous one in 2013. But last time around, we didn't get one, which caught everybody off surprise, including myself. So somewhere that would be, you know, Bitcoin gets to, let's say, 250,000 and peaks somewhere between the summer and the end of the year. Okay, that seems pretty reasonable. The other probability is that we we have a full bubble cycle because now there's more access to it by the ETF. There's more acceptance. There's more regulatory acceptance. It captures more mind share. There's like 110 million Coinbase wallets and only about 10 million are active right now. So that number can go up dramatically. So we can see a huge participation and a final kind of belief that this is it. That could happen. And in which case, then you could see an extension to maybe 400,000 plus in this cycle. But I would give the short cycle and the bubbled cycle roughly the same probabilities. I'm probably more erring towards the bubble cycle, but let's call them both 20% probability and 60% for something typically starts when one of the other big layer ones starts hitting all-time highs as well. So now everybody's celebrating in the party and everything starts getting recycled down the risk curve because now you're going, well, Bitcoin's up 70,000 or 80,000 and maybe it only gets to 150. So I'm only going to make 100%. I mean, in normal markets, these are crazy numbers, but in crypto, it's like only 100%. It's not worth it. So you start looking for where am I going to make five times or 10 times or 20 times? And that's when people go out the risk curve and it starts getting crazy and stupid stuff happens and people make it and lose fortunes. I try and navigate it by, you know, I use this expression, don't f*** this up. And really it's because this altcoin season really has a tendency, everybody to screw up because they suddenly get the FOMO. They can't see straight. They want to use leverage. They want to make as much money as possible. If they start going really far out the risk curve with all of their portfolio, they start custodying in stupid exchanges they should never do or putting money into DeFi things that they should never be involved in. And before you know, it all goes wrong. So my advice is always, look, put 90% of your assets in these core crypto 
call it free for now, the three biggest ones with proven network effects are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana. And think of that as a risk curve. Bitcoin, the least risky, Solana, more risky. It's earlier in its adoption. It should outperform, all things being equal. And then you can have 10% where you can do all the stupid sh and try and make your 100x. That will end up being your wallet of shame. You'll have a bunch of stuff that goes to zero in there that you never get rid of, but you can't do yourself damage if it's only 10%. And if you get it right, great. Right, you're going to add, you know, another 100% onto your portfolio, but you can't mess it up by doing it. So enjoy altcoin season. Realize that it should move ETH and Solana more. So you should get some really good returns out of that, but don't overextend yourself when you go too far out the risk curve. If Bitcoin is the gateway drug, the RAAs, everybody else, you can kind of get your dad across the line with Bitcoin. You know, and you can just use digital gold or you know store of value or something that's pretty straightforward. ETH really is the settlement layer for all of the layer twos, but also I think a lot of the financial services industry will build on top of it because it's deemed to be the safe bet. It's like using Salesforce for your CRM and other stuff. It's like using AWS, right? It's the thing you don't get fired for. Now, I think Solana will grab part of that market because of FireDancer, which is much faster. We can talk about that later. But generally speaking, ETH is the easy choice. It's like you work for a large corporation, they'll give you Microsoft Office. ETH is Microsoft Office. I don't use my judgment because what do I know? I just look at the people being involved in it. I'm seeing more venture capital. I'm seeing the Bitcoin maximus getting kind of pushed into less relevance by people who want to build the more open, interesting, useful Bitcoin ecosystem. We're seeing incredible activity in ordinals. There is going to be some other layer twos. I think there'll be Bitcoin meme coins, which will really piss off the max. But I think Bitcoin really needed this because it needed other types of activity. So I think it's good. I think it's very positive. And, you know, the people I respect and trust, whether it's hedge funds I invest in or whether it's other people in the space and VCs, they're all saying, listen, you got to focus here. I'm not really focused on it, but I think it's a very valid thesis. So there's Rob Paul with his insightful views on the crypto market, touching on various crucial aspects such as the Bitcoin halving, the altcoin season and the potential trajectory of Bitcoin's price. His analysis provides valuable insights into the ongoing shifts in the crypto landscape, emphasizing the importance of caution during volatile periods like altcoin seasons, whilst also recognizing the potential for significant growth opportunities. Raul offers a balanced outlook, encouraging investors to consider diverse strategies and remain vigilant amidst the ever-changing dynamics of the crypto space. Before we go, a quick reminder for those who are keen on staying updated in the fast-paced world of crypto and Bitcoin. Consider subscribing to our daily 5-Minute Crypto Newsletter. It's a concise resource for the latest expert predictions, breaking news, and top on-chain analysis trusted by over 60,000 subscribers for insightful crypto investment information. Click the first link in the description to join our community and elevate your crypto investment knowledge today. Anyway guys, hope you all enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one and as always, all the best.